I've traveled the world as a writer and an activist for my entire life. What we are talking about is a revolution. We are the women that our parents warned us about. And I can tell you that by confronting the problems once marginalized as women's issues, we can tackle the greatest dangers of the 21st century. Pakistan, Behind every major crisis, there's an unseen factor at play. A story you've never been told. The greatest indicator of the world's stability, wealth, and safety is the status of women. Rape in times of war is a form of terrorism designed to instill fear, create trauma, and destroy communities. The victims are attacked, mutilated, and then shunned. In the Democratic Republic of Congo alone, 1.8 million women have been targets of brutal sexual assault. And today in the DRC, mass rapes are no longer confined to war zones. They've become routine. This is little baby Horeb. He's super cute. He's um, a product of rape, like most of the kids here. They're all growing up in this little community because just like the women are shamed from rape, the products of the rape, these kids, are also shamed and therefore it's very hard for them to grow up in regular Congolese society. So this is a place that they can legitimately grow up and be accepted. We wanted to find out why these rapes are happening. More than 20 years ago, armed forces from Rwanda invaded the DRC. This set off a wave of conflicts between tribal militias, ethnic groups, and guerrilla units from other countries, all battling for power in the mineral-rich hills of Central Africa. And almost every one of these groups has used mass rape of civilians as a terror tactic. The war officially ended in 2003. The question is, why have the rapes continued years later? We went deeper into the region to find out. So we're still in Eastern Congo. We're just leaving the very last buildings that are under government control. One of the rebel warlords has actually agreed to speak with us. Um, so he sent some of his soldiers to come meet us, which just means getting past these roads first. Is it far from here? Yeah. Over the years, groups of local militia, known as Mai Mai, have sprung up to defend against rebel attacks on their villages. So we've been walking for about six kilometers with these guys guarding us. We're just getting to the village where these rebels and their warlord are based. Can you describe what your life was like before this war? To this day, 13 years after the end of the war, splinter rebel groups from Rwanda and local Mai Mai militia, like this one, continue to fight over territory. Can you just explain what your tribe does and why do you guys still need to be here with the heavy weaponry that you have? <laughs>
kumbe tukatoshe tukapige tu kama nitakufa leo ama mtoto wangu akufeli kesho As these rapes continue the survivors often have no place to turn so many of them end up here This is Masika Katsuva Around here she's known as Mama Masika She began bringing survivors of rape to Buganga village in 2000 Most of them come for medical and community support. It's kind of a mini refugee camp, so they've kind of tried to start to rebuild their lives again. Mama Masika? Hi, the Jumbo Jumbo. I'm Isabel. Nice to meet you. Hello. Mama Masika asks me to wait while she documents the progress of Georgetta, who was brought here physically and emotionally drained. around a month ago. Pulu kwetu tulikuwa ka tuna lala jo vire bandera amwe bakifikaka abamwa banangu jo bakeni kamata kunikatakata mwili wote kamata mai ya moto bana nilunguza so kunilunguza ale jo bote ginzi balikwaka na jo vile bote balini kamataka makumi mbili nikumepita siku mbili niko tuku komande na nianza tupale na maiti zote watoto wangu saba na wana yangu na maiti ziko tu pembeni yangu tani shituka kisha shituka akili na kutea do you know who these men were bale ni befe ndere bale beba litoka Rwanda With so many women like Georgetta falling victim to this horrific violence, it's easy to imagine the harm it's doing to the society as a whole. Visiting Mama Msika in this village full of rape survivors, the sheer number of atrocities and the effect it's having on society at large begins to sink in. Nianza ikazi mdemila. Donc na kwa kenza niko natumika ikazi. wa mama misha pata wa mama 1010 na 112 na tatu nishazika fam beba na kufa na sida fi bewangali wa mwe de 18 ans beba na kufa mwa watamwingiza muti alikia na magonjwa fam menye bali pia banaingiziwa miti vile bana kufa tu banaacha watoto The pain of rape is something Mama Mastika has experienced firsthand. She and two of her daughters are survivors of violent sexual assaults. Jo vile ile date ya 29 ste sawa kama shamba. Akaanza kunibakia jele minofu ya bwanangu. Nimesabia wa kwanza, wa pili, wa tatu mpaka 12. na wakati nimesalia 12 nimesikia kushambri mwingine watoto wangu nao wanaanza lia mama nikapoteza akili mtoto wa kwanza alikuwa na katorza mwingine alikuwa na duza na ile siku wote wakabeba mimba na familia ya bwana nimalisema mimi ni kwa mtu wa mikoshi akaujisha parcel benye balikuwa wadogo bali balikuwa wamebakiwa pamoja na mie nimesha kuwa na watoto wakaniambia bali ni bambaraga wenzangu this is the real tragedy of rape in the DRC not only are the women brutalized they also lose all status in society Survivors are often shunned by their communities and driven from their homes. Tango imiaka 15. Nilionaka wakati mwana wa mama wenzangu wamekataliwa mu familia zao na mimi nilikataliwa kama familia ya bwana. Tumejiunga pamoja tumeanza kazi ya mlimo ya mashamba. Asante mana utatenda na utakuwa faraja katika jina la Yesu Kristo naomba hivi. Amen. 
With no home to go back to and no other source of income, the women rent plots of land and grow just enough staples to feed the village. They sell the excess to pay for supplies. They are somehow surviving, but still in constant danger. There are rebels all around this region, so it's still a really vulnerable place for women to be farming. Militias like the one we visited say they need to exist to protect their communities. But several Mai Mai groups have been publicly accused of perpetrating their own rapes and murders. Because it's obviously so hard to control all your troops as a general, do you think that it's possible that any of your soldiers could have ever raped anyone? Well, <laughs> This is where we're going to spend the night. Everyone's kind of still eating and chattering around us, but we've got a bunch of guys and soldiers with their AK-47s and their RPGs guarding over us. Don't know if that makes me feel safer or not, but yeah. For the people of Eastern Congo, the raids, rapes, and fighting in their land never ended with the war. The reason is simple. The DRC is sitting on a fortune of precious metals and minerals. And all of these armed groups are desperate to get their share. This is one of hundreds of mines in this district which are mining for gold and coltan and various other minerals, which is where the majority of the wealth comes from in Congo. Eastern Congo is one of the world's top five producers of coltan, a mineral essential to the production of laptops, tablets, and cell phones. Prices for coltan are soaring, making the mines high-value targets for different rebel groups. These groups raid the mines and then use the spoils to buy weapons and supplies. This makes working conditions extremely dangerous for these women who have no choice but to work here after losing their farms and families to the same rebel raiders. So when was the last time they came here? And what happened to the women working here in this mine? So are you safe working here? If rebels showed up right now, it's really not easy to escape. I mean, there's nowhere to run to. These women are completely helpless and vulnerable. And these miners aren't the only ones at risk. This plague of sexual violence has been spreading beyond the conflict zones and into everyday life. So we're at Pansy Hospital in Bukavu. This is a place where women come from all over Eastern Congo from miles and miles to come and seek medical help um, for rape with extreme violence. Um, this place was set up by Dr. Dennis McQuaigie, who we're about to meet. On the team of Marbeth Clinic, we have two teams. Dr. McQuaigie is a Nobel Peace Prize nominee and the world's leading expert on treating victims of gang rape. J'ai travaillé ici pendant plus maintenant de 32 ans. Je n'avais jamais vu ce que je vois aujourd'hui. Jamais. Aujourd'hui, on voit le nombre d'enfants violés qui augmente et je pense que ça c'est un phénomène qu'on doit absolument comprendre. Dr. McQuaggy takes me to the hospital's pediatric wing to see for myself. Bonjour. Bonjour. Mama, how are you? Bonjour. Bonjour. How old is your child? Six. 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 Tuta, tuta, 
na kuona kama uh, ile, ile njia yake ya cho inaomba operation zaidi au hapana we have a protocol how to treat this kind of lesion we have five classes so here we have uh, when only it's the skin who is touch the physical effects of rape on a child can be devastating in some cases the vagina and anus are completely destroyed leading to incontinence and infection in the worst case the child's abdomen is punctured which is usually fatal most of them are dying just here or before or they came and reached this place after so i'm not alive This child's injuries are healing. She will not need surgery. Sawa, mom. Seeing a six-year-old child who's been raped really brings home how horrific all this is. Why do you think it is that we're seeing the increase in rape incidences amongst children and various different provinces? Je, je crois que c'est lié à la guerre. Lorsqu'on les, euh, on les reprend, donc on les, on les désarme dans les groupes armés, il n'y a pas une prise en charge psychologique qui les accompagne. Et ils ont, ont fait ces, ces atrocités. Et ils vont dans la société avec leurs problèmes psychologiques qui nous amènent à ce qui est un acte qui est pénal, finalement est considéré comme un acte euh, presque de routine dans la société. In fact, of the 1.8 million rapes committed in the last 20 years, only a fraction of the cases have ever gone to trial. That means the vast majority of rapists in the DRC remain completely free. Et il y a des viols euh, qui sont commis par Uh, la, la, la population civile, tout simplement, puisque uh, l'impunité est totale. We're just entering the village of Minova, which is right on the border between North Kivu and South Kivu. Back in 2012, this is where government troops swarmed in and raped well over 100 women. According to survivors, the culprits were not foreign rebels or unregulated militia. They were the DRC's own army. In response, the government took an unusual step for the DRC. They held a military trial to bring the perpetrators to justice. 39 soldiers, including five high-ranking officers, were brought up on charges of rape, looting, and failure to maintain control of troops. After a six-month trial, a verdict was reached. Only two junior soldiers were convicted. We're just outside Goma, and we're going to go talk to some of the perpetrators of the Manova rape. We were told that to get access to these prisoners, we should first interview the vice governor of Goma. We pensons que ce procès-là, c'est un procès qui a fait un couronnement de la lutte contre les violences faites aux femmes. La haute cour militaire a fait un travail formidable. Le commandement retient la discipline de nos éléments et nous pensons que dans le cadre de la réforme de l'armée, il y a une nette amélioration. Even though the vice governor had said we should be admitted, when we tried to go inside with our cameras, we were refused. Okay, Izzy, come back. The minister that we spoke to was telling us how great their justice system is, how many men have been convicted of rape in the last few years, how many prisoners they're holding in here. They haven't let us see a single prisoner. So it's impossible to tell. I don't know how the justice system is working at this point. What is clear is that every single month, Pansy Hospital documents nearly 100 new cases of sexual violence 
against women and children. And these are just the cases that are reported. Without an effective judicial process consistently handing down real punishments, this statistic is not going down anytime soon. So what hope is there for the DRC, for the women and girls in Mama Masika's village? Guarantee since we filmed this piece in the DRC, Masika Katsuva died suddenly from complications of malaria. It's a profound loss of a woman who changed the lives of countless people. Meanwhile, the rapes continue. As we've seen in many parts of the Congo, sexualized violence for more has been normalized. Until that is remedied, any other hope for peace will be in vain. <laughs>